Well, hello. Hello. Hashtag I am a dipshit. All right, Ivy. You're not a dipshit, Ivy. We've all been there. <laughs> oh, Brooklyn's lurking and playing Halo with Brogan. You're such a good mom. I would yeah. really play Halo with my children. Well, tell them to go entertain themselves. Well, this uh, this is her last week um, with him, like full time when the oh, summer starts. That's right. Mm, yeah, that's sad. You will miss him. Yeah. So, yep, lurk away, halo away. Every, Have all a like, good time. That's what the replay is for. Yep, she says she's gonna rewater it later. I don't know if that was a typo or a pun. I think she's gonna rewater it. Yeah, she's gonna rewater it. It's what your Just plants keep them moist while you you're playing water Halo. Your plants. You don't want them to water. dry out. That's right. Yeah. Well, what's new with you as we're waiting for people to file in? What's new with me? I've done a lot of gardening work this weekend. So next weekend. We will not be, or next week, by the way, there will be no wet your plants. That's because, right. Memorial Day. Sorry, yeah, people. Yeah. Sorry. You're going to have to just entertain yourselves because yep. next weekend, so I'm going to take a couple days off. I'll have like a four day weekend and it'll be the big pond tear down and set back up. So I thought. For some reason, I thought you already did that. Like you were waiting. Well, I did for... some of it. I divided all the water lilies and got them going. I divided the lotus and got it going. But like the bog box, all the gravel has to be removed from it and washed just with the hose. Mm -hmm. And then the, like there's some plumbing revamp that has to be done. And I mean, the big thing is, is like I can't wash hundreds of pounds of gravel by myself. Like I have to have help. Why not? I don't know. Why not? <laughs> so, so yeah, we're going to do that. And, uh, but I planted a bunch of stuff. I planted a bunch of flowers and, you know, just getting things going. Mm -hmm. I might plant some more flowers every year. I plant more. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I got um, a little tub pond going and then I'm also going to, I'm going to buy a big stock tank. I think I'm going to buy the three foot by eight foot one. I was going to just buy the two foot by six foot, but I'm like, eh. three by eight. Wow. Yeah. That's like, uh, that's like 200 gallons, huh? It's pretty big. And then I'm going to paint the inside of it with flex seal. So it's safe for fish. Oh, and what then, are you doing there? I don't know what I'm going to put in there for fish. I don't know. Oh, for the no. I might get some rice fish. Ooh. I might get some rice fish. And then I've got two water lilies and a lotus to put in there. And I'll put in some other plants too. I mean, I do different plants every year. So If you get rice fish, I think you're going to be a breeder, whether you like it or not. <sighs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, if there are too many of them to deal with them. I don't know what I'll do with them. You're going to have to learn how to ship them. Maybe the metalheads will just want them. Suddenly you're going to be I'll on get, get gills them. and you're oh, going to quit your corporate God. job and you're going to be like <laughs> no. living on ramen wages selling fish. No, it's not <laughs> happening. No. Speaking of shipping things, I'm shipping pond plants this week. Last week was a bad week for me. It was rough. It was tough times. But I got to show you what I got to ship them. So we got these hot cold bags. Nice. They were, I think, like three or four dollars each. They're the things you can buy at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. I got them off Amazon. And then I also got some mini ice packs because it's hot in some places in the country. So hopefully that'll keep things safe. So those will go out as soon as my boxes from the post office come. So oh, I ordered when did you, oh God, when did you order them? Oh, God. They said they'd come in five days. I ordered them on Friday. No. <sighs> Sorry to break it to you. Those you priority can't... boxes, they're... <sighs> Sometimes they they've taken two weeks to a month to get them. Maybe it's because I, I tend to order a bunch. Like I, I only ordered ten. The... 
Well, that should be nothing to them. It then, said sometimes I'll order like fifty. Well, I hope so. Yeah. It's well, otherwise, I'll have me. to see what boxes I can dig up from the closet, like random ass Amazon boxes. So, because I don't know, mm -hmm. they don't have like those boxes at the post office, do they? They just have flat rate boxes, right? Um, I don't know. You could ask, but normally, yeah, I just see. I see a lot of express envelopes and priority envelopes and I guess maybe the flat rates. Yeah, they've got flat rate. So we, sometimes I you can save on flat rate. Uh, well, maybe I'll where you're shipping it. flat rate boxes if they don't come because I just want these out of my fridge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I can so, sympathize with that. So few to go out. Oh, I hate mm -hmm. shipping things. This is why I don't sell plants. I hate shipping well, things. Let's say you want to sell plants or, I don't know, just want more plants. Which I, I have sold plants before, back when I was a poor graduate student. I did sell plants. So, so did you have like a dedicated tank for plants or you just did no, it the I same mean, way I you're just, doing it now? I just sold, yeah, I just sold things I had. I mean, I had a 29 gallon and two 20 longs and you know, I just sold the plants I had out of it. So, No. I made some money. So do you do anything special to propagate the plants in your tank or they, they just do what they do and you have to split them? They just do what they do. And I work really, really hard to beat them back into submission because mm -hmm. they get really overgrown. Um, but I have in the past, I have done things to propagate certain plants. I have like dry started foregrounds before. So. So what is the advantage of dry it. starting them? Um, so, they grow faster? I don't think they grow appreciably faster, especially because I use CO2. If you don't use CO2, they will certainly grow faster. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it used to be that, so the big foreground plant was HC, Hemianthus calotriptoides, which That's is kind of like part. Monte Carlo, but... Dwarf baby uh, tears, so they call it? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. But it's like mm -hmm. Monte Carlo, but it has even finer leaves. Yeah. It's a little touchier to grow than Monte Carlo, I think. I think Monte Carlo is an easier plant. Um, I was doing well with that until a rainbow fish or something was like, I'm going to pull on this. And it just ripped the whole mat that I had growing really well. What an, ass what an asshole. That's not yeah. very cool. Yeah. But it was, it, with this plant was really expensive when it was introduced. I mean, a little like one square inch patch of it was like $10. And this was in like, you know, 2009 money. So it was, a, it was a lot of money. Also, I was grindingly poor back then. I think that's important to know. Yeah, perspective. So I, I did actually, like, I took a shoebox and I filled it with cheap substrate. And um, I flooded it. And I, I put it in a sunny window and I grew a ton of it. And then I, I, used, I used most of that. And I did sell some of it. So, and that, that made me some money. Which was nice because I had no money back then. I think that's important. You know, yeah. Just grindingly poor. So, uh, yeah, I have done that. Um, you can also dry start a tank. Uh, some people like to do it to get their foregrounds going. It's so dry start, fun. essentially, you're just you're planting them in the substrate. Mm -hmm. You're moistening the substrate. You're keeping it moist. Right. You want to seal it as tight as you can. You want to keep the wrap. environment, yes, very, very humid. Because mm. hopefully the theory is the more humid you keep it, the less the plants will have to adapt to their flooded environment. Eh, I don't know. I mean, crypts, I think, are still going to do what crypts do. I think they're still going to melt. Right. Um, but people do it. I don't grow my foregrounds that way anymore i have grown full grounds of you know hair grass and monte carlo i keep them rooted with glass plates which is a trick i learned from bentley pasco it's a great yep. trick i just bought cheap glass plates off of amazon and i keep you my can monte get carlo dollar plate. picture picture frames right yeah I mean, that works too that works too i just got glass plates i just googled glass plates on mm -hmm. amazon and that was that i bought that 
Um, and it does keep them rooted. And that's really the trick to getting a Monte Carlo lawn going if you have sufficient light and CO2. I really think Monte Carlo needs CO2. I yeah, well, if you want it to look the way you see Monte Carlo look in all, like basically every photo of Monte Carlo you've ever yeah. seen, you need CO2. It, it will grow without it. It just The leaves are so, so tiny and it yeah. grows so slow that I yeah. think it just is going to get attacked by algae. I just mm. don't, I just, I wouldn't bother with it without CO2 personally. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, um, let's see, I've done that propagating. I've also, I uh, did an experiment years ago. So Anubius has always been very expensive. And back when I was really, really poor. So Anubius is one of those plants that I don't think has any trouble adapting from terrestrial to submerged i don't think it has any problem like it just looks great either way it never melts back so what you can do is you can take an anubius rhizome and you can take a new razor blade and i would sterilize it for this so you know just uh, with some rubbing alcohol and you can chop that rhizome up into pieces and you can propagate a ton of anubius that way when you say pieces, you're talking about literally the bare rhizome, bare with, rhizome. No, with no leaves on it at all. Yeah, I, might, I, I actually might leave a leaf or two like okay. cut it in between the nodes. And then you can put it on, um, uh, you know, you do the same sweater box thing. It needs mm. a, not a ton of light. Don't go crazy because otherwise, like, you know, that still can get overrun by algae. Even in that, you want to keep it very, very humid. And you can propagate a lot of Anubias that way. I used to sell some of it because Nana Petit was very expensive. Nana Petit is still pretty expensive, I think. Yeah, I mean, for like a about mm -hmm. that much of it, it's, you're going to pay 10 bucks. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't do that anymore um, because now I just buy what I need. And I, I actually can grow a lot of, I mean, I have propagated a lot of Anubias. I've given a lot of it away. Because, um, you know, CO2 makes it grow a lot faster. I would yep. never go blasting your Anubias with a ton of light. Here's a pro tip for everyone. Always put it in a more shaded part of your tank. Otherwise, it really gets overrun by spot algae. I think yep, Anubias. So Anubias yep, yep, here we go. Anubias boost carpet right there. And so I used to have a little bonsai tree there. And now I have this sword plant. I wish this red sword would get redder. What do you want from me to be red? Uh, yeah, so it's it's shaded pretty well. This is a, also a tall tank, and it's got Fluval 3.0s. They do hit full blast light, but I, this Anubis has been in here for um, at least a year. It's it's I guess it's adapted. Like it grows really fast now. Yeah. So does the boost. Yeah, regular Anubis I think grows faster than the nana petite i mean the nana petite just takes a while small leaves it just it just does um but so i've done that and that works i've also i've propagated crypts i've grown them immersed in the same like sweater box setup i don't know why i did that it was just a thing to do wasn't really trying to prop i think crypts grow pretty easily anyways especially if you have co2 i don't find it like so sweater box setup is just saran wrap on a box. Yep, saran wrap on, on a box with cheap substrate in it. I think mm -hmm. I used some like soil master because I had it like the, which is like a cheap fired clay substrate. It's like Turfus Pro League. Mm -hmm. I used that. But uh, would I do that now? I, no, because like Fat Kitty would, he would, <laughs> he, he will not permit that. That's not a thing. Like, ooh, it's a box with plants in it. This is oh a challenge. Oh my God, I have to murder it. It would just I, it with challenge. my little paws. <laughs> I mean, so I wouldn't do that now. I mean, you know, that's kind of a phase of the hobby I went through. Everybody goes through phases in the hobby. It's not, it's not something I'm interested in doing now, but it's the thing I've done. So, and I did sell those and I did make, you know, I made enough money to like pay for other plants I bought. Let's put it that way. I did not get rich off of it. Um, yeah. But it's a thing I did. I never like, 
I never was into like plants for profit. Like I know Bentley had a phase like that, but I am not, I am not good at making money in any other way except by like my brain. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like I am terrible at running a business. I am terrible at being entrepreneurial. I'm terrible at selling things. I'm really only good at like that customer service aspect of it. Thank you, Rico. Please don't send this back oh. to me. Money, money, money. Thank you, Rico. You can't tell because me what to do. All of the money you give helps put Steven's children through college. It helps grow yeah. his channel. So they got a long way to go. Because then I can put Fat Kitty through college. Yeah. So, you know, your money helps. It helps our goals. So, thank you. For sure. <laughs> now, if we don't make the goal, uh, I'll probably Fat Kitty just... will never go to college. Then you just spend that money on, I don't know. For me, um, liquor. I don't know. You don't drink, so. <laughs> I don't drink. <laughs> I mean, I would spend it on, like, pie. We go on, there you go. We go on a pie spree. I fund. So let's say instead of you're not, you're not trying to like do the dry start stuff or you don't, you're not really trying to sell plants, but you got a new tank going and yeah. you bought a bundle of some stuff that you like. Of course, when you initially plant it and everything looks really sad, unless you yeah. spent hundreds of bucks to uh, propagate or to fill up a 90 gallon, it's going to look a little barren yeah. for a while. So what so, I would do so, and I always kind of suggest this to my friends who have fish rooms. And I was like, oh my God, I have 200 tanks in my fish room and I need plants for all of them. <laughs> and I was like, Kelly, could you give me plants? No, be self You asked for it. Nope. You are so, now disqualified. Here's the thing. Put CO2 on one tank. Just one. Like put it yeah. on your biggest tank. Maybe you're, you know, if you have like I have this 90, if you have like a big show tank, put CO2 on that and boom, you will have enough plants to fill your whole fish room in no time. <laughs> Even For if sure. you have slow growers, you will still, you will produce tons of crits. You will produce tons of dwarf water lily. I mean, that's the secret to filling out your fish room right there. Just put CO2 on one tank. I know that Foxy and Peplin have CO2 on one tank. They do. And they're non-snail tank. Yeah, yeah. But then they can use all of those. Yes. Because they have a million tanks between them. They won't tell you the real number, but it's a million. And every day it's more. <laughs> I believe you. Tomorrow so, will be a yeah, million that, and one. Right, but that's the secret. They can take all those plants and they can move them to others. So that's right. what I would tell people to do. So let's what about just the individual type of plant propagation? So like stem plant. Mm. What are the rules of propagating a stem plant? You cut it right at the node, right above that that set of leaves. Chop. Snip snip. Snip, and then snip. plant that top into the substrate. In. Do you do you ever float them first? No, just stick I don't them either. Right in. I just stick them right in. I mean, especially like they're already a, they're already used to my water. They're used to immersed right. to you. They're used to submerged lifestyle. So I just stick them in, and they just go. And uh, you know, I don't really grow a ton of stem plants now in my lifetime, but I have. Mm. You know, I've grown lots of different rotalas. I've grown lots of bacopas. I've grown lots of Ludwigias in my time. And uh, yeah, I just snip, replant. And how you get a really good looking like aquascapery hedge of plants is I take the stand of plants that are there and I cut it right in half and I plant the tops in the front. And that gives you kind of a nice sort of contoured bush looking yeah. stand of plants. You cut them in half. Uh, so like what if I was half. propagating like for if I wanted like the, the bushy look, I will cut my stem plants kind of low, especially like if it's a dense leaf stem plant, because I want to make sure whenever I cut the stem that there are 
God, what is it? I feel like there was a there's a rule of like propagating or trimming roses where you always want to leave at least five leaves or something that's like that. That's only so for roses. I'd like I mean, to follow that rule just because yeah. you gotta have I mean, leaves if it makes there. You happy you can follow it, but like that that thing that applies to roses. Like that yeah. doesn't apply to other things. You but it applies to photosynthesis, it. right? I mean, no, not, not that it has I to be mean, five leaves, but I mean, if you cut it completely down to the roots, it might come back from the roots. You can chop it you wherever you want. Part? Yeah, I mean, it might. Mm, I, you it know, might, it well, what if you're in a hurry and you don't want to like be hopeful? You just want to guarantee that it's going to grow. I mean, it depends on the look you're going for. But if you're like mm. seriously aquascaping, you want to trim it below what you want the yeah. final stand of bushes to be, and. Right. I would maybe trim it like somewhere between, I don't know, a third and a half of the total height. I would cut it down to that. At least, yeah, I cut it yeah. at least. And then I plant the top. A new tank. I plant the tops in the front and it gives mm -hmm. it a nice look. And then you keep trimming it gradually a little bit taller, a little bit taller, a little bit taller until you have your final grown out bush. And then I guess you take your fancy pictures and enter your contest and away you go. And so, then it never looks that good again. Never looks that good. <laughs> then you've got to tear it all out and replant it. Right. Um, and that's why I don't deal with the stems. I just, yeah. you know, it's a thing that, uh, it's a thing you can do. And if it makes you happy to do that, you should do it. But it does not make me happy. I saw so, a question. Rico was asking, can you float them? I was asking if you float them. I mean, yeah, you can. You can. It's not going to hurt them. They kind of start growing random ass roots, though, between the nodes. Yeah, and then they get that little like curve. Down. They get the curve. And so if you ever want to put them in the mm -hmm. substrate, they put them in. You have to wait a couple of days for it to like, right. adjust itself. Yeah, because roots like to grow down. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, other people, what they do is they, they'll put like a plant weight on the bottom of a bunch of stems and let that root and then plant that first. But I don't bother doing that. Yeah, like Audra said, I started keeping stem plants in the substrate. Yeah. I did it first too because I was trying to follow the rule of like plant one stem a half inch or an inch away from the other. And like, first of all, that looks stupid when you, when you plant them that far apart. And secondly, if you don't have like super dense, compact substrate that holds it in there, like if you have aqua soil, for example, um, they're not going to stay. You're going to have a fish just brush against it slightly. And uh, there it goes. Meow. Where are you, fat kitty? Yeah. Where are you, fat kitty? Eric. Plant. Eric Wyrock. Eric Wyrock, thank you for helping send this cat to college. You just heard heard him. He's like, I want to go to college. He's tired. I need my education. So what was he meowing for? Like, I want you to put my bed right here where I am. I don't want to have to walk to it. <laughs> He's mad. <laughs> He's the he's a drama queen. He's such a drama queen. You can plant yeah. them in a bunch with a plant weight on them. Now you don't want to put, put too many because they'll you'll end up kind of like rotting the stem. Each other. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so like two or three. The secret to getting your plants to stay in the substrate, you got to have enough substrate there. First of all, if you have made them, and I've done this, I say this because I've done this. If you only have two inches of substrate in your tank, it's not going to hold. I mean, no. if you have like four inches, though, it's going to hold. Um, and the other is get yourself some aquascaping tweezers mm -hmm. and practice. Like George Farmer has videos of how he uses tweezers. There's this. There's a trick to grabbing it by the roots, sticking it in there, opening the pinchers before you pulling it out, giving it a little wiggle and removing it. And like if you watch, I've seen on Green Aqua's channel, I think it was like Luis Navarro was planting or some like fancy aquascape or maybe it was Oliver Knott. And he was, he was planting so fast. He was just like, Dum! Dum! I, I guess couldn't if you do that all freaking day long, but it's that's not so because bad. they it's practice. It's yeah. practice. 
this. Um, um gardens, no, yeah. you were not we were not talking about Matt. You missed Fat Kitty appearance. That's the drama queen. You miss you miss Fat Kitty, and now he's gone and run off on his yeah. cat business. But maybe he'll be back. You never know. Mm-hmm. He meowed really loud. Yep. He did. Um, also using uh the right substrate to hold it down. I've I recently discovered this UNS Contra Soil Fine. It's a little bit finer than Fluval Stratum. I think it holds plants mm-hmm. a little better, so I like it. Um, sand hold plants really well. I don't really like sand. I love sand. I don't really like it for sand a lot cap. of reasons. Um, just mostly because like it's not a nutritious substrate, but mm-hmm. it's super easy to plant in. It's they just stay. Um, so I think that's that's it. But it's honestly, it's practice. It's just practice. Oh, here's Tony Kitty. All right. Oh, she ran off. So that's probably the most, stem plants are probably the most involved in terms of getting them to propagate. A lot of other ones just sort of do it on their own. They just sort of do it. Um, So like this giant water lily behind me, it's a nymphaea. It's sold as tiger lotus. But it's not really a lotus. That's just a trade name that's incorrect. So it's a nymphaea, which is a water lily. Um, you can propagate those. You can you can cut down between the rhizome, but it'll also send off little bulbs on runners. You can just pull those out. You can give them to friends. I've given lots of water lilies away. Yeah, um, whenever we rescaped my 40, I had, I had the giant uh, lotus back there. And it had been sitting in that tank for a couple of years. And when I pulled it out, there were basically like four mother plants with no bulb, like they had propagated. And then, um, and then there was, I don't know, at least like 20 oh, yeah. little tiny little, like the little tiny pea sized bulbs and like little leaves. So I, I have them. Yeah, all if over I were to pull this down. out, I'm sure I would find a ton more, but like, mm-hmm. you know, I've given lots of those away. My and my water lilies outside, I did the same thing. They don't send off the little bulbs, but the rhizome gets really big and you just chop it up with like a clean knife or razor blade. Oh, nice. You can even just snap them apart at the at each node. Mm-hmm. And so that's why, you know, I had so many of them to give away. Um true lotus, like there's just tons of roots. You can just pull out pieces of roots to send them out. Um, I do have a cool propagation thing going on right here. You can see, I don't know, see this? This is an Amazon sword. It sent up a... Oh, yeah. Spike, and I have a little one here I'm going to snip off tonight. And it's going to be shipped to a special person. Ooh, who is that special person? Is it a secret or have you not figured it out yet? It's Dee Dee. It's Dee Dee oh, because I still course. haven't sent Dee Dee all the plants that she bought. <laughs> Oh my so, God. I know because I haven't done a big trim. So <laughs> she's getting pond plants and she's getting a bunch of stuff from this and she's getting the stuff I knit her. So Dee Dee's been mm. very patient. So yeah. yeah. Well, it's worth the wait for sure. Cause yeah, I, I imagine and, you're going to send her a shit ton of plants. Yeah. And I want to show everyone when I got to ship stuff out. So for the pond plants I'm shipping, which I hope we're going out this week. Did I show people this yet, or did I tell you before the stream? I don't even remember. I don't. Off Amazon. I, I think I think you did. I don't know. I don't remember. What's the difference between backstage and live? Who cares? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but I got these off Amazon. They're like lunch bags, and I got some little ice packs to put in them. So I hope everything will be safe. I don't. Well, maybe you heard that twice. Who knows? <laughs> well, I think you said it at the very beginning, and we we've had you know good. 20 something people come in since then. So <laughs> there you go. Oh, no. But that is a good way to ship him because it is uh it is freaking hot. It is really, really it's cold hot. Here today. It well, got down to 41 last night, but it is gonna get hot later in the week. And I know that like I have someone I'm shipping to in Texas, and my God, it's horrible there. I don't know how you guys live like that. I don't know how I do either. Oh, because I don't go outside. My air conditioning does not work that well, but today is cold. So, (laughs) Um, so yeah, the sword, that is a good one to talk about because swords don't just shoot out runners in the, or like 
well so a crypt like you can see this crypt behind me right. that is i've divided this crypt like four times like yeah. it it is has been twice this big before and you can just keep dividing it especially in co2 it's magical uh this i know and so then like the dwarf and they send runners all over the tank yes. so i have like crypt spiralis all over this tank that has just got to i've got to i've got to be back to horde it's it's a problem yep same with valves they'll send off runners and they'll just grow wherever they feel like it um dwarf sag will do the same thing but um swords i noticed some of they'll send off runners or they'll send off the shoot like yours did mm -hmm. i had a red sword that decided to send a shoot all the way to the top and um and then it flowered which yeah, you know, was a nice mine surprise. Did too it flowered and then but it it's got that little sword at the top and so mm -hmm. i waited in until it had some little roots coming off it and i'll clip it tonight and you know so what i've found with swords and what i've been told and you know i've practiced and it actually works is with a sword you have to uh you got to stress it for it to want to mm -hmm. to reproduce and what I've noticed is my tanks where I've got uh, plecos, when they start eating that sword, the one in my mosh pit, when I had a bunch of plecos in there for a while, they started chowing down on the big sword. I started cutting all those leaves off and like it was basically almost down to nothing. Well, that thing like panicked and sent a shootout and grew like two more swords from it. And yeah, it did it really this fast. Not, this is not terribly stressed. It looks pretty good, but it sent up two of them anyways. So I don't know. I think it was just ready. It hadn't done it yet. Could be. So. It was just, it was so immediate that it did that. And then it yeah. did it again after, after like a few months of the other leaves growing back, the pleco is deciding I'm going to eat more leaves. And then yeah. I trimmed them all. And then it came back. Like I've, I don't know how many swords okay. I've gotten from that one sword. But um, yeah, it's an interesting propagation trick. I don't know if it applies to every species of echinodor, whatever you power the hell you say it. Echinodorus. Echinodorus. I mean, I mean that's a big genus. So I've I had know. this this sword plant for this big sword plant for about two and a half years, and it has never it has never shot a runner or anything. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I would rather that they didn't because I'm not trying to propagate it, but it has done it. So I have something to give away. True. So you can, I don't have open top tanks is the problem, but if I did, I mean, there are certain, I've heard of people. So for like a Ponagetans, which I have one growing, um, they flower really easily. Mm. Um, you can, you can pollinate them. And you can let a seed develop and then you can plant the seed. Cool. I haven't done it. Um, it's hard because like. The, the only Aponagetan that I've ever had was a Madagascar lace leaf. Yeah. I have the Boiviensis, I think it is. Anyways, but the cool thing about it is I had given up on this plant. So I got this two years ago and it had died back mm -hmm. and it was dying. So I just cut all the leaves off i forgot about it coming yeah. back now it just started nice. a couple weeks ago so very cool yeah it's it's cool and it does flower really readily um but it's kind of tricky to let it flower because i have a lid and you can't not have a lid with rainbows no i did get a, a play, I, that sword that flowered it did find its way through a little crack in the lid like a little the gap where the hinges were yeah, like mine is kind of at the front of my aquascape, so it kind of can't, just kind of can't find a spot to do it. So, Shell, thank you for the Shell. super sticker. It's the little, um, it's the little Shiba Inu that says number one. Oh, thank you for sending Fat Kitty to college. Awesome. That will cover one fiftieth of a textbook. Oh, uh, right. but Fat Kitty can't read, so he doesn't need textbooks. Damn. Well, I don't know. Remedial courses are not cheap either. God, he needs them. <laughs> he needs them. He needs remediation. Should we take questions? Yeah, let's Anything take questions. Say? We take questions. 
You take the questions because I always do them out of order and then you get mad at me. All right. Well, I did see before, before more questions pop up, I did see that uh, someone was asking about that glass plate. I don't know if anyone yeah. like clarified, but literally it is just like you can get picture frame glass, just something clear and heavy right. that will sink into your tank. You literally like push down the Monte Carlo and just and have just it sitting leave it on there. for like three weeks. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't yep. be tempted. You can look at it because it's clear and that's why light gets through. Right. But don't be tempted. Don't think like, Oh, just check it to see if it's there. you got to wait like three weeks. And yep. then but once it's rooted, you're, you're done. Like game over. It'll just spread. Yep. If you have loaches yourself. or corridors, that's like the only way you're ever going to get Monte Carlo to root. But it does work. Mm -hmm. And then, like, it's rooted so well that when you do water change, you can just go pat, 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 pat to clean it, to clean all the mold out of it. And you have to nice. trim it. That's the other thing. If you want to keep your Monte Carlo looking good, every, like, month or so, you need to trim it back hard, which is a pain in the ass because it makes a mess. Yeah. And, it, uh, it also, does it float? It does float if you don't keep up with your trimming because what happens is it starts dying on the bottom and then yeah. like air oh. can get underneath there and it'll mm -hmm. float up so that's why it's really important to trim it it's kind yeah. of a pain in the butt but it looks so good um oh good thing i have the youtube chat open today because Streamyard really needs to to show these member milestone things how do I identify my new bubble counter and solenoid? Yeah, Scotty for like dirt cheap found a solenoid in a bubble counter for a That's future really CO2. Cool. And um and I don't know what it is. I mean, it's a solenoid. I don't think you'll be able to because here's the thing. Those companies, they buy parts and they use them on their own regulators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a solenoid. So I've never had a, a regulator that that where I was like pissed off at the solenoid. You know? Right, and I've it's never had a regulator where I was pissed off. Well, I mean, I'm always kind of pissed off at the bubble counters. But it's because you have to use off. Teflon tape every time. That's that's all there is to that to keep them from leaking. Oh, really? Yeah, I've always found that. Hmm. I just replaced because that's where they always leak from is the goddamn bubble counter. And well, so I just. I never thought about that. Yep, Teflon I'm tape. I'm always obsessing over the damn uh, the the connection point, whatever the hell you call it. No, mine is always always the bubble counter, and I just always put new Teflon tape on it every time, and then it just works, and then I, I don't have to think about it no more. So yeah, yeah. So you, it's probably no specific manufacturer. Um, the thing yeah. is, is like. The solenoid and bubble counter is not the expensive part of the regulator. It's the needle valve. And the quality of the needle valve determines the quality of the regulator. People do build their own. I'm not the person to help you with that. There's a guy named Rex Grigg. I believe he has directions on his website for how to do it. But I can't I bet help. he does. Yeah. He's also kind of... He's a salty man. Let's just put it that way. Well, you, way yeah, don't it. don't communicate with those people. Just enjoy their the information that they've put out and just uh, let them yeah. let them be. I'm not interested in talking to those people. He's been around since the days of yore. Uh, I bet he hates YouTubers. I bet he hated everyone. He's never been what you would call overflowing with, with the milk of human kindness. His name is Rex, W-R-E-C-K-S. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, nice. I think he has information for how to build a regulator, but I can't help you with that. I'm not going to do it. I don't DIY anything. Yeah, I, and I can't even think of a regulator that doesn't come with a solenoid. Like a dual, like a, a dual stage regulator that you absolutely need to get, dual stage. No, because like they were, you used to be able to get them without it because you just let it, you'd let your CO2 run 24 7, which you can do. Mm, no. I don't because I feel like I don't want CO2 running if I don't have lights running. It's wasteful and like I don't want to risk, I just, no, I don't want to do that. 
Um, so, all right. So Rabbit Snake wants to know how do you propagate the pogo simon? Os it, okay, if it's from me, that's the um, I sent her octopus. That's a stem okay. plant. So yeah. same principle, like cut it somewhere above the node make sure there's some leaves where you snip it just because it grows a lot faster out of there um and then yeah plant it plant it back in there and that yeah. and, and then and, like watch it take over your life oh yeah i like a lot of those plants that i have in there are fast growing oh, like yeah. invasive yeah i don't think that like bacopa grows near i don't think anything I don't think any stem plant grows faster than Pogo stem and Salatus octopus. Except for maybe under the like right conditions. Under the right conditions, pearl weed. Once you get it established, at least mine is. My pearl really? weed is is a pain mm -hmm. in the ass now. I think that I think that I think Pogo stem's worse. The only thing I think that grows as fast as it is a hygrophila polysperma sunset, which you can't even find anymore because it's mm. so invasive. Yeah, if you're if you've got a live bear mosh pit, pogo stimmin, it's good stuff. There you go. Lots of lots of fry cover. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It'll grow out of control. Yeah. Yeah, pearl wheat is a fast grower. Um, I mean pogo, it doesn't have it doesn't have much competition in terms of uh the level of invasiveness. And then the same thing applies to a carpeting plant. I sent her dwarf sag, and yeah, that's going to take over everything, too. Take over. That's why I don't grow it. Valisteria can also take over, which is also why I don't grow Valisteria, because it's just too, just too much. Just too much. But if you have a gigantic tank and you have, like, 10 sprigs of, of Val or, or dwarf sag, It'll get then there. just wait. Yeah. It'll get sure. there. Um, so Scotty was asking, so what I got could be useless. That solenoid. Um, I mean, I don't know what I would do with it, but maybe you could do some, maybe you have talent and, but I don't. Well, you know what, if anything, you have it and you can look at it as inspiration to get a complete regulator and a right. CO2 cylinder. They pretty much always come with them. All that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's a backup part you have on hand in case that, you know, the regulator you buy, like the bubble counter breaks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, I wonder how reliable solenoids are. I mean, I do assume that they're all kind of the same thing. They're probably yeah. made by one I don't or two think, factories. I don't China. think that that's the part that breaks. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, Helanthium tenellum. Yes, that is a good carpeting plant. I would that's agree with that's that. a is that the Vesuvius? No, no, it's no, a, it's a it used to be known as E tenellum. Oh, it's a it's the pygmy chain sword, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Liliopsis brasiliensis is also a good carpeting plant. I, don't, I think it looks really good. I have some, oh no, Brooklyn has some of that that I ordered. Nice plant. She um she was going to clean off the gel from the tissue culture and then it turns out that the they're not in very good condition so she's yeah. working on getting refunded for that. Yeah, and Brooklyn is really she's had some tough times lately. But I'm about to make I'm about to order some stuff from Boost Plant. There's a couple things I want. I want some floaters for my pond, so so boost plant normally does really well. There's just a few issues that we've had lately, but I mean, we've, yeah. we've ordered a lot of plants. So it's just kind of I the rule of statistics. I mean, and the thing plant. is, unfortunately, there is just no plant seller as good as the co-op for quality and customer service. That's just that. Unfortunately, the co-op has pretty bare bones selection. I mean, if I could, if I can vote, order it from the co-op, I do. Yeah, but it's a it is a curated selection of plants curated. that people will have the most success with, which right. I understand because but Candy doesn't want to be bombarded with people know. whose freaking Rotala Wallachii is uh is melting. That. But there are even like some other easy plants, but just aren't common and they don't have them because they just yeah. have a very minimal selection. And that's fine, it's what they do, but because of that, like I do end up ordering from other places so 
Bex is ordering ooh, mm -hmm. and her CO2 system from CO2 Art. That is very yep. exciting. I'm very happy for you. She's getting the inline diffuser awesome. and she's That's getting the, the, of course, the regulator and, yeah. and the, I guess I like, the drop checker. And, I know, like all inline the diffusers. I'm a big fan. I think they're less maintenance. I like uh, what it was called the, the reactors. Cause, I like know. to see the bubbles because then I know it's mm -hmm. <laughs> tiny bubbles. I do yeah. I like the bubbles, but not everybody does. And if I'm I had okay a bigger with tank, the bubbles, if, it's just... if I had a bigger tank than this, I would get a reactor. Mm. Boost boost is the worst, or boost plant is the worst. I, I like boost plant. For I the most too. part, and they have good customer service. If you get mm -hmm. crap plants from them, and like they come in in good condition, they also and, have uh, really great selection of more rare plants, which yeah. I like. And there's just not a lot of good options if you like rare plants. I mean, you know, and the thing is, I just order tissue cultures now. I'm a convert since I know how to deal with tissue cultures. Tissue cultures For a while, nice. I didn't I didn't like them. I didn't know how to deal with yeah. them. And now I've got a handle on it. And man, you get a lot for your money. You do. I mean, especially for foreground plants. Mm -hmm. I mean, in one pot of like hair grass tissue culture, such good bang for your buck. So, And cleaning off all that rock wool yeah, I'm, I'm over that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Rock wool, Monte Carlo, never oh, again. Oh, never God. again. And those Hint, Hint Corey of Aquarium Co-op, so rock more. wool and Monte Carlo, rock wool on the roots. Uh-uh. I hate it. No. I hate it. A pit, Scuba Steve asks, opinion on API root tabs. I have never used them, but if I recall, they are a capsule type one. I don't like anything that comes in a capsule because they float up. I am very loyal to Seachem root tabs because they're a solid tab and it stays where I put it. So if I had them, I would use them because fertilizer is fertilizer. I've heard yeah. that you can poke a, a hole in them with a pin to help keep them to get them to stay put. But I really like Seachem root tabs and they're about the same price as anything else. Yeah. You just, so if you have the capsule type, like, cause I really like the aquarium co-op root tabs. They're annoying because you know, they're, they will float. But if you got a little needle and you uh, poke a hole and then squeeze it when you get underwater, then they won't float. But you know, Seachem root tabs. They, they just, just say, yeah. They just stay. And so, and I bought a giant, when you buy them in the big bulk package, they're pretty good value. So I just bought a giant package. That said, I hardly use root tabs. This substrate is very mature. There's a lot of fish pooping. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I need them for a newer setup. I would use them. Yeah. Right. I keep them on hand because I do have some inert substrates and, Right. I have, and I have like fluoride and, and, um, eco complete, which needs supplementation. You as well. also have newer tanks that are newer mm -hmm. setups. Like these are pretty, they're true, old, like two years old. So, well, this one is one year old. This one is two years old. Yeah. Like right. I don't have to put them in the mosh pit because like that, that whole <laughs> substrate is just muck. So so poop. <laughs> I am fertilizing plants with fish poo in there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So Eric said, they literally sent me the wrong plant, wouldn't send me the right plant or refund me. They offered a 10% discount on my next order. I raised a stink and they offered me 20% discount. F boost. You know what? That's super uncool and you shouldn't That's not order cool at all. Again. That's uncool. That sucks, Eric. That sucks. That would, that would make me mad. That would sure. make me mad too. Yeah, that sucks. Rockwell could potentially damage the gills of fish not sure there's any research behind it it does damage the mammalian lung though it's I very can imagine it's fibrous scratchy. yeah scratchy and fibrous i think it's gross feeling i don't like the way it feels on my hands 
I yeah. don't like it. But that said, I do sometimes buy things in Rockwell because maybe that's the only option. Um, I use a fork to scrape as much away as I can. That's that works in most cases on those fine, delicate, easily rippable roots of Monte Carlo. It doesn't. No, work. no, I would never buy Monte Carlo that way. I would always buy Monte Carlo in uh, mm -hmm. tissue cultures. So yep. much easier. Foregrounds and tissue cultures are it's just totally the way to go. And Beck said it would just be way more money to try and dose a 60 gallon to 8.0 pH and higher GH for snails as much as she wants to. Doesn't like the look of crushed coral or aragonite. Yeah. Yeah. Like a bunch of that shit in the substrate. So CO2 it is because why yeah, not? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, that what tank you is going to look so freaking yeah, awesome. Yeah. It's going to look awesome. And you have so many little tanks and you can have snails in those and they'll have, you know, they'll have wonderful homes. Mm -hmm. and you can still keep ram's horn snails. I, I mean, I get some ram's horn snails that are huge in my CO2 tanks. Yeah. And their shells I'll, look okay. And Clethon, like Neorites and Clethons have really tough shells. Right. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't do a mystery snail, but I still have plenty of yeah. snails. Just there's so. nothing as there is nothing as like strikingly pretty in terms of snails uh, as a mystery snail. It's very so. true. They're beautiful, but you still have lots of other tanks you can keep them in. And every tank is a compromise, you know? Yeah. You, that's just you can never keep every fish you never have the right conditions for them you don't have the room for all of them everything is a compromise mm -hmm. um let's see greg's trying new tabs from aquaria they are solid like the sea kim so that might be a good uh oh, option where's where is that from aquaria aquario oh I aquario don't i don't know that hmm that's nice to have another option because the Seachem ones are a little pricey. So, mm -hmm. but solid root tabs are the they're the way to go. Don't use pond tabs though; they have ammonia in them. In some of them, they're fine for pond plants because they're they're shoved under like several inches of substrate. Um, yeah, but I would not trust them in my aquarium. I use them in my my pond plant, my ponds though, and I've tried many brands, and they're they're all the same. I mean, they're all a solid tablet. I've never um, seen any so different. Chance Larson said, "Good success buying from Aquarium Plants Factory." Okay. I think I've bought from them from like their eBay store or something before. They're cheap. Um, they have a good selection them... of rare stuff. That's kind no, of my big uh, thing. I mean, they've got. They have the well, at least from what I saw on eBay. I don't I haven't been to their site. They probably have a lot more on their site. They have a bunch of stems. They have Anubias. They have the typical stuff like that. Yeah, I mean Boost Plant. They have they have just a lot of rare stuff, which is very cool. But Eric, I get it. I'm mad too. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see what we got. So Bunny Viper says she uses a aragonite under her substrate for her for her guppies and snails. The only thing is, is substrates always mix. It's just what they do, especially if you're pulling out plants. Which you, if you have a planted tank, you are going to be uprooting plants. Yeah, that's and the thing. The heavier, you... the heavier always sinks to the bottom, and the lighter always comes up. So substrates always mix, and that's why I never use layered substrates. They drive me batty. But if that doesn't bother you. Then it's okay. Yeah, well, you can I think it in filters too. I think it would. Yeah, you can definitely put the like crushed coral and stuff in the filters. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I know that if it mixed, it would bother Bex because she it would aesthetically it just would. It would bother me too, mixed Bex. with whatever her cap is. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think that the best thing you could do would be to like put on an extra hang on back filter and just stuff it full of it. Yeah, I think that's. That's what I would do if I wanted to raise mystery snails. Though my water, I mean, it's hard enough for mystery snails. I mean, I have a, I have a GH of six out of the tap. Um, Fishymon Eco, like Eco Complete substrate, does not have fertilizer it's in like it. It's like gravel. It's it has gravel. It technically has the minerals that you would think plants need, except they're like not bioavailable not at all. It has a very low cation exchange capacity. Mm. 
So that means that it cannot exchange those minerals. It can't pull it can't pull minerals out of the substrate ion, cations, positive ions, out of the water column to make them available for your plants. It's basically in inert gravel. It works fine. Inert gravel works fine too, except that it costs a bunch of money. So it's like I hate to see yeah. people wasting their money on something when they could just get black gravel, which is way cheaper. Mm. Bonnie Vipers, yeah, sorry. We're just, just the warning that substrates can mix. I mean, it's you can like, be super, super careful. But if it doesn't careful. bother you, it's okay. Yeah. It's, like, I've got not, black It doesn't sand. bother Steven. Well, it's if it were two different colors, it would, okay? And if it was like a display tank. But, for example, in the in the uh, 40 that we just rescaped, me and Brickley, there's black diamond blasting sand, and there is UNS Contra soil. And it's mixed, but you don't really notice. And you definitely won't notice once I have the carpet completely uh, covered. Because they're both yeah. black-ish, and then uh, it's not noticeable to me. I just don't want. Yeah, I don't. I don't. It's just not a thing I'm interested in. Layering yeah, 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 yeah. It's a thing I have tried. I've gone through that phase, but I'm done with it. Because you know, keeping aquariums, you go through phases. Oh yeah. When I'm done. For sure. Now you're in the. I do it my way and everyone else is wrong. Screw you. No, I mean, I'm just, I do it my way and <laughs> I'm, you know, that's that. I mean, that's I do that. try other things, but. Well, I think whenever you buy a house and you've got more room, I think. Uh, I'm going to get a might... sump. That's my new thing I'm going to try. There you go. That's I'm another tank, one. technically. It you is. Can you can grow in that sump. I am, but I'm going to get help to do it. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm not setting up by myself. Like Jake help or like professional help? I don't know. Maybe both. Hmm. The thing is, the thing about Jake is this. Jake is very smart, but God damn it. He never reads the directions for the filter. And so I have to watch <laughs> him like. The directions like, are a last resort. Let's get okay? the directions. Let's get the directions. And he's like, mm. I'm like, come on. Here's the manual. I found it for you. RTFM. Read the fucking manual. That's right. I don't do it. I, I don't know. Do it. It's a man thing. Unless I have to. It's now, if I do thing. get something in the mail at night, and I know I can't set it up that night, but I want to like at least play with it, I'll I might take the manual out and peruse it a little bit, and maybe I'll learn something, or I'm maybe like, I'll get you, bored. You watch a YouTube video on this? No, no. And I can't criticize because I'm not doing it. You know. It's uh, it's a man thing. It's like, why won't you use navigation on the car? Why do you always have to navigate yourself? And then we're always lost. Oh, uh, okay. That's not me. I, I turn on Google to leave my damn he does not. Sometimes. He does not like Siri telling him what to do. Oh. And it, you know, all relationships have their hardships. So... So I don't know. I think I would get. So Bunny, you have a sump. That's awesome. Oh, you're planning your sump. That's right. I'm really excited for you, Bunny, because I think that uh, the reason I want a sump for my next big tank is it's really hard to maintain big filters by yourself if you're a woman. They're really heavy. An FX6, mm -hmm. I can't lift a full FX6. You know, it's so clunky too. It's just big. It's, like yeah. If you're a small person, even if you could lift that much, it's like it's like lifting. I had to lift a, a fridge today. It is, but like I, I can't really lift bulky. 75 pounds that's clunky size, you know. So, but a sump, like you just reach down there and you pull out the pads and you clean right. it yourself. So I'm excited for you. That's awesome. So Fishy Mon asks. If you have an under gravel filter, will it pull liquid fruits into the substrate? So I have had an under gravel filter when I was a kid. Um, under gravel filters are just circulating whatever's in the water column to the roots. So if it's mm. in the water column, it'll pull it down. So if you have liquid fertilizer, it'll pull it down. You don't need an under gravel filter to do that. Any filter, any, any circulation will allow for water movement it'll be fine the thing that i don't like about why i would not have an under gravel filter is because the roots are going to tangle in that plate 
And you have to, every now and again, tear your tank apart and you have to clean the substrate and the under gravel filter. And you're going to have roots all tangled in there is the only thing. I think yeah. it's effective filtration. It works. I'm not super excited about it because also the uplift tubes go glug, 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 glug. So, you know, but they work. You just lifted a twin captain's bed all by yourself. Well, that's because you're stronger than I am, Annette. And I'm Did Annette tell you the story yet? I'll let her tell it to you. I know she's a kitty story for me. Was yeah, she that's related. Me? That's related to the kitty story. You know what though? That's just mama strength at work. Mm -hmm. That was just adrenaline and mama strength. I gotta, um, hear, I gotta hear about this. She's oh yeah, me. absolutely. Did, so is Austin going? Um, checking to see if we're. Oh God, yeah, it's over. Yeah. I'm sorry, Austin. <laughs> I don't see him, but maybe he's waiting for us patiently. Which we're jerks. Yeah, we are jerks. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, thank you to our awesome mods and all the chatters and the lurkers and the people who catch the replay. Thank and you whatnot. so much, everyone. Appreciate it. Just as a reminder, next Monday, Memorial Day, we will not be wetting our plants. You have no, to go wet I'll your have, own plants. I'll, I'll have pictures of my pond. Awesome. The week after. So see you all later. Bye. Bye-bye. Right.